Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Amid intense load shedding, government announced an extremely disappointing outcome from its latest renewables procurement bid window. Terence Kremer joins me to discuss developments. Hi, Terence. Hi, uh, Sashni. So, what is the background to bid window six? Well, bid window six was the second uh, bid window that we've held subsequent to that very long period of disruption to our procurement program. We know that the renewables program was held up internationally as being a very good model. But in 2015, the then state-captured Eskom leadership decided not to proceed with a uh, signing power purchase agreement, it led to a seven-year disruption. And we had Bid Window 5 eventually launched only last year. And Bid Window 5 has been quite traumatic. <laughs> and uh, those, we, we got a good response and we had our 25 uh, preferred bidders announced. But these were bid before the impact of th some of the new uh, Chinese COVID lockdowns happened, and then obviously the Ukraine, uh, the invasion of Russia into Ukraine earlier this year, which changed the cost dynamics ma massively in the, re in the energy markets generally, but also in the renewable space. And uh, I think a lot of those projects struggled in terms of that, as well as uh, there'd be, there's a backlog around, even then, around the grid and getting budget quotes out of Eskom. So we had massive amounts of delays. And then load shedding, as we know, has been intensifying. The worst ever year of load shedding, the last few months, extremely intense. You know, this all culminated in a difficult period for, uh, for bidders, for the economy. And basically, um, so President Cyril Ramaphosa in July announced that they would expand bid window six. So initially to from 2,600 megawatts to 5,200 megawatts, and then they realized that the determinations weren't in place for, th for the, the solar portion of that. So they curtailed it back to 4,200 megawatts. Nevertheless, a massive round, a big single round. So that's really the background. So they tried to expand it. They wanted to get more uh, renewables capacity into the grid as quickly as possible. And that, that is why they had this expanded bid window six. And what were the outcomes announced this week? Very, very disappointing, as you said in your intro. Uh, only six uh, solar projects have been announced as preferred bidders out of 56 projects that were bid. Um, and, you know, there were about, not quite half, half, there were more solar projects, but there were 23 uh, or 20, over 20 wind projects that were bid, not one wind project closed. And it's uh, a very disappointing result. As we know that we're in this deep load shedding, we need to get capacity onto the network as quickly as possible. And uh, th these projects, the renewable projects, are known to be the quickest and cheapest way to add new capacity. Obviously, we have to do other things uh, around battery storage and, and other flexible generators to ensure that the variable renewable generators are backed up, but they will be backed up as well by the coal fleets initially. But uh, these are very important projects and we needed to get them going. Now grid access has emerged as the main problem. Yes, uh, and this is, was the shock, I think, of the round. We know that grid access is a problem. We know that the grid is highly constrained. We, you know, Eskom's been stating for years and years that particularly in the Cape provinces, there's very limited grid capacity available. But then these projects were bid on the basis of a report that Eskom produced around what capacity was still available. And they went ahead and got shovel-ready projects. Now, you must understand, to put a bid in through the IPP program in South Africa is a very expensive exercise, a few million rand per project. So, it's, uh, you know, it, it requires confidence in the program. It requires investors to make do the hard yards, which they did. So you have these potentially shovel-ready projects that are now sterilized. And the reason they've been sterilized is there's been reforms in the market, as we know, uh, to allow embedded generation projects of initially of or currently of 100, sub 100 megawatts, but eventually of no size to come through. And, you know, this reform is very important and it's going to be very important to add new capacity but it needs to be managed. And it hasn't been well managed by Eskom, by the IPP office, by the DMRE, by NERSA, because what has happened is when you bid into a project, uh, uh, the REAP program, 
you can only get a cost estimate letter until you become a preferred bidder for grid access. So you get a cost estimate letter from, so you don't put any finance down. Uh, so you're basically showing interest in that grid. <laughs> in the interim, people have put money down and asked for budget quotations to access that grid, that same capacity. And there was no queuing system in, in place from Eskom. They say, well, the grid code says non-discriminatory access. We can't reserve any capacity. So this has been swooped upon, taken away from shovel-ready projects, uh, uh, which is quite devastating. And we don't really know whether the projects, I'm sure there are real projects, but we don't really know whether there definitely are projects that are going to be able to absorb that grid capacity at the same rate as uh, these shovel-ready projects would have been able to. So the rules of the game were, are, you know, weren't well managed. And I can understand we're doing a lot of things at, at once, but this was an obvious risk because grid at the moment is the most precious commodity for all RPPs uh, and for all the, you know, developers in this electricity space, whether it's for the, the bilateral private PPA market or whether it's for the REAP program. And th this should have been really foreseen, particularly by Eskom when they started to see these budget quotes, the red flag should have gone up and they would have said, should have said, what do we do? We've got a national program here and it's going to be undermined by you know, another reform. The reform is not the problem. It's the way we're managing uh, post these reforms. And it really now brings into question as to what, you know, what the future is of this national procurement program. So what does it mean for South Africa and the renewables program? Well, I think it's back to the drawing board time again, uh, which is problematic because we need this capacity as quickly as possible. It's going to have to be redesigned. I mean, surely there has to be a queuing system. There has to be, you know, if you are bidding and the rules of the game are that you can't get a budget quote until you're preferred bidder, you, you have to cater for that. And it hasn't been catered for. So we've got a serious problem. You know, hopefully we'll get some of this capacity coming on even quicker than the REAP projects, but that's not a certainty. Whether, whether th these private PPA projects are definitely there, we, we don't know. So I think in the short term, uh, Eskom and the RPP office need to, make, need to interrogate who got those budget quotes. And if they're real projects, well, then that's fair enough. And they must go ahead and they might even go ahead quicker because of the hurdles and the hoops that, um, that REAP projects have to jump through. That's important to get that capacity on the grid. But if they're not real and people don't have environmental impact assessments in place, et cetera, et cetera, then the shovel-ready projects surely have to get present. Look, it's not clear whether any legal action is going to be taken or whether, but, it, but the rules of the game weren't well managed. Uh, and we basically have a system where on the wind side, three gigawatts of shovel-ready projects are sterilized. And this is at a time when we need as much capacity to come into the grid as possible. So it may be people gaming the system. It's not clear. And I've, that's what I'm saying. An investigation needs to be held. But this red flag should have gone up quite a long time before, uh, before this and getting announcements of only six projects when there should be many more than that. And we're only getting less than 1,000 megawatts when we were wanting initially 5,200 and for the allocation for the round was over 4,000. This is not good news. And uh, it really points again to a poorly managed, poorly coordinated uh, transition. And where is NECOM? Where is the National Energy Crisis Committee? They're dropping the ball on diesel. They're dropping the ball on Kuberg. They're now dropping the ball on the procurement program. There's just too many balls being dropped at a time when these all have to be in the air and being juggled, I'm afraid. So it's a, it's a crisis and one that we have to try and find a solution to as soon as possible. But in the long term, the only way out of this is for Eskom to accelerate uh, grid building. And if it can't do it, and it looks like it can't, then they need to get the private sector, they need to have other type public procurement programs around adding grid capacity at, at the pace and scale that we need. We just aren't doing it. Now there's a lot of bitterness around this because Eskom gets money every time we pay the tariff for grid access. And it doesn't, it will grid develop, and it doesn't seem that that money has been spent adequately on developing the grid. So I think what it's shown is the importance of the grid, and what it's highlighted is the massive investment backlog in the grid, and this has to be sorted out urgently. 
Thanks for speaking with us, Terence. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis. Don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter. To subscribe to Crema Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly, please email subscriptions at cremamedia.ca.za.